It's awesome to share with you guys today. And I know uh, last Sunday, we kind of had a Sunday off because we did Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, which was Thursday and Friday. So I was like, oh, we'll have a break on Sunday. And I don't know about anyone else, but I really loved having a lazy Sunday. I think my family loved it too because I told Caleb last night we had to come to church today. And he piped up and goes, but you canceled church. We don't have to go anymore. <laughs> so Caleb, I only did that one Sunday. No, you didn't. It's forever now, isn't it? And I was like, no, we got to go to church. So I think Caleb and my family really liked relaxing at home. But when I was relaxing, I got thinking about New Year's resolutions. Especially with it being that time of year where, you know, a new year comes and we make plans and we get ready. And I don't know about anyone else in the room, but I really struggle with my New Year's resolutions. I usually make these really good ones that I'm going to stick to. I make it about a month and then it just seems to crumble. Usually because I get distracted very easily. And that's why I wanted to do a series for the month of January called Plans. And I want to kind of look at the idea of making plans. And maybe what God has to show us about how he can help us with some of the plans that we make in a new year. And uh, when I first got this idea of a series in prayer, I kind of laughed to myself about plans. If you want to know more about my horrible planning, you can ask him who finally made me buy a calendar so I can be more on point this year. But the reason I'm so bad with plans is I'm a bit of an ideas man. I love coming up with ideas. I mean, Kids Church was the best because when I did Kids Church at Humorage, I just got to be an ideas man and come up with crazy ideas and then go ask someone, could I do this? And they just say yes or no. And then I come up with another idea. And I'm just always bouncing through these different ideas in my head. And that's why I find it even more funny today that I want to share about staying focused with our plans. Because we all make plans in a new year, whenever it is, we'll make a plan. Sometimes we lose focus. Sometimes it's hard to stay focused. So I kind of want to look at that this morning. And to have a look at that, I want to read again the verse that Verna read, Mark 2, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, and the roof man. It's what I like to call the paralyzed man. I just think it's a fitting nickname. He's dropped through the roof, so he's roof man, in my opinion. But I want to look at this story and kind of go through it a bit slower and just point out some things I think God wants to show us that can help us stay focused. But before we get into this story, there's stuff that happens before in Mark. So before in Mark, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. So right before this incident happened, he heals a man. So a man comes up to him begging, asking Jesus to heal him. Kind of falls down on the ground on his knees and says, you know, heal me if it's within your will, all that stuff. And Jesus looks at him and replies, I'm willing, be clean. And then this man is cleansed of leprosy. Which was a big deal because it meant he could go back to his family. He could go back to the community he was in. He didn't have to live on the outskirts of town. He didn't have to be in exile anymore. And Jesus kind of told this guy, like, hey, go do the regular stuff we have to do. You know, go give an offering and stuff to Moses. Go see the priest in the temple and, and do all the regular things. And just, you know, do what you would normally do. Don't mention me or what I did and all that kind of stuff. Just go do the normal stuff we have to do. And this man, so full of excitement, goes and tells everyone. Instead of going to the temple and doing the regular things, he decides to tell everyone. And word kind of spreads like wildfire about Jesus. Because I don't know about anyone else in the room, but gossip spreads like wildfire faster than anything else. I think working in a school as a chappy proved that to me more times than none. Like sometimes there'd be these little gossip stories and the whole school would know and it would get exaggerated and by the time you hit the end of the story, it's way bigger. So that's what happens. This guy with leprosy gets healed, he's excited, he tells everyone and it spreads. And that's why when we get to Mark, 
we hear about this house being filled. Because people know about Jesus. They're expecting things now. He's got a bit of a re reputation. He's like, way back in the day, there was a band called One Direction. The little kids that would sing together. They're not little kids anymore. They're all like adults. I don't even know if they were little kids back then. But they were super famous. And when they would go places, people would like wait outside hotel rooms to see them, to get a glimpse of One Direction. And, you know, little teenage girls would scream their hearts out, and they each had ones that they loved more. I kind of like to imagine that's what's happening with Jesus. He's kind of got this popularity and this status now because word spreading about him like wildfire. So everywhere he goes, there's a crowd. And it tells us after this guy with leprosy tells everyone about Jesus, Jesus can't just enter towns anymore. He has to stay on the outskirts. He has to go to lonely places because if he goes into town, it makes a big commotion. And that's why when we get to Mark, we read about this house being packed. And I kind of want to dive into the story and just take a closer look. So if you guys want, you can open up your Bibles. If not, it will come up behind me if you can read that. And let's just read the first four verses again. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left not even the outside door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was laying on. And the first thing that pokes out to me in this whole little opening of the story is that it's too crowded. It's too crowded in there. It's jam-packed. It's like, you know, those little clowns who come out of the little clown cars. Like, it's, it's a packed house. And kind of for these four men, plan A and B fails. You know, they're carrying their friend who's a paralyzed man on a mat. They're probably like, hey, we've heard Jesus coming. We just have to find him, and then he'll heal you. And then they show up to this house, and plan A's failed because Jesus is there, but it's too crowded. So they're like, all right, let's, let's just get to the door. If we get to the doorway and he sees this, our friend, he's going to heal him. It's Jesus. I know it's going to happen. But then plan B kind of fails because they try to get to the door, but it says they can't. It's too crowded. And I love how they stay focused. And they keep looking at what's next, looking for the unexpected. And then we hear about them digging a hole through a roof, making a hole and lowering their friend down. So I kind of love how these four men stay focused. And I just want to keep reading and read the end of this story again. And this is what we read. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up, take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And that just makes me say, Wow. Thinking about this whole story, this whole interaction of Ruth Man, as I like to call it. Just everything that takes place throughout the story. And there really is a lot we can look at and unpack, but I really want to look at the last verse that we read. Because I feel there's something in it for us that can help us with staying focused with our plans for 2021. And the last verse we read says this. 
This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And that sticks out to me because I think we have to believe there's more to see. There's more to experience. There's more to see. That's what the four men were like. They believed there was more to see. They got to the front door and plan A and B failed, but they knew there was probably a plan C, so they kept looking for more, knowing there's more to see. As uh, Smith Wigglesworth puts it, and if you don't know who Smith Wigglesworth is, you should really Google him. He's a crack up of a character because he's this evangelical guy, and the reason I loved him is uh, when I first became a Christian at 16, I heard a story about apparently this Smith Wigglesworth, awesome name, goes into a funeral for a baby, and God told him to go there somehow. He gets a baby, the dead baby, out of the casket, puts the dead baby on the ground, and kicks it across the room into the wall. And apparently the baby comes back to life. And I just kind of love that story because, A, man, that's a gutsy guy. Because I always thought to myself at 16, like, what if... What if it didn't happen the way you think? Like, how are you getting out of that one? And then there's other stories of when he was, like, first studying. He went to pray for one of his friends who was a pastor, and his wife was sick with something. And they were going to anoint with oil. And I don't know about anyone else, if you've ever been anointed with oil, it's usually, like, you know, they put little little drops. Well, Smith Wigglesworth got really passionate, and felt God was telling him to go a bit further. So he jumped on the bed over the top of this lady and poured out all the oil on top of her. And she was healed as well. So he did some crazy things. And I would never do any of that, but this he's a fascinating guy. And I have a thing at work, just a book of all his teachings and messages, because I've just always been interested. And partly because Wigglesworth what has such a good last name. But he says this about the four men. Four men whose hearts were full of compassion carried the man to the house. But the house was full. The men who were carrying the paralyzed man said, what shall we do? But there is always a way. I've never found faith to fail, never once. I love that quote. And I love it too, because I think to stay focused, we need to believe there is more to see. Taking things one step at a time. Maybe since I'm an ideas man and I love coming up with ideas, instead of coming up with these ideas and then moving on to the next one, go a bit slower. Realize there's more to see with it. And that's something I've been trying to do, stepping in uh, to the role that I have here at Highfields. And, you know, moving into a building soon. And, man, the ideas I have had. Kim could probably tell you how many great ideas I've probably come up with. But I've really felt God telling me to go slow, that there's more to see. And I feel like he's told me that with our drop-in center idea, just trying to have somewhere in my fields that kids can go after school. Instead of rushing off to the next thing or the next thing to plan or, you know, go a bit slower. Sit with that more. There's more to see. And I think if we're able to take one step at a time, It helps us. We're able to be patient. We're able not to race off to the next thing. We can go a bit slower because there's always more to see. Even when plan A and plan B fails, we know there's more to see. I'd love to say that, you know, with the drop-in center idea for youth, and I think we even want to do some stuff for uh, retirees as well once a month and try to make it a place the community goes. I can tell you right now that Every idea that, you know, around those things, we're probably going to at least have three or four fail or backfire on us or not work out. But that's all right. So if we sit with it long enough and if we keep looking, there's more to see. We're going to see more. We just have to be patient. We just have to take it one step at a time how God's leading us in 2021. And I feel if we can do that, it's going to help us stay focused. So I have a goal for 2021. And I'd love for you guys to join me in it, but I want to be like the four men carrying the paralyzed man. 
always believing there's more to see. Plan A and plan B fails, that's all right, there's more to see. And I think if I'm able to do that, and we're able to do that, it can help us with staying focused in 2021, which I know would make my wife really happy because it probably means a little bit less ideas that I blurt out and try and I'm more goosed up. I'm, I'm a bit off the cuff and just you know, invite 14 young adults to my house because they need somewhere to go and do silly things like that that I don't think about. So I'm hoping that if I'm able to take this story on board and we're able to take this story on board, we can go a bit slower, believing there's more to see, just like the four men who carried the paralyzed man on the mountain. And I just want to close in prayer as the worship team gets ready to come back up. God, I thank you so much for who you are. I really pray that you'll help us as a church and as individuals to go a bit slower in 2021, to stay focused with the plans that we have, to look at our plans a bit longer, to look at the things we're trying to achieve this year a bit longer, realizing there's more to see. And I also pray that when stumbling blocks come up with the plans that we make and stuff doesn't work out perfectly, that we won't just cast it aside straight away. We won't just discard that plan. That we'll sit with it a bit longer. That we'll be patient and believe there's more to see. Just like the four men who carried a paralyzed man to Jesus. I pray that you help us keep that mindset so we can stay focused with our plans in 2021. And you're amazing, Amen.